When we're drawing the Lewis structure of a molecule, we rely on the octet rule to let us know when each atom in the molecule has the correct number of bonds and lone pairs. As a reminder, the octet rule tells us that all of the atoms in a molecule prefer to be surrounded by eight total electrons, either in the form of bonds or lone pairs. Now we've already learned that there is an exception to this rule, and that exception is the hydrogen atom. The hydrogen atom is a very small atom, and it's just not physically large enough to hold eight electrons around it. It's just too small. So the hydrogen atom always has only two electrons. Hydrogen is not the only atom that is too small to accommodate eight electrons. There are a few more that are just not simply large enough for all eight electrons. Let's make a list down here of the small atoms that we say violate the octet rule, just simply because they're not big enough to accommodate eight electrons. We'll go ahead and include hydrogen on this list, even though we already know that hydrogen is too small for eight electrons. Hydrogen, as we know, likes to have only two electrons. The beryllium atom, which is also very small, only has room for four electrons around it. And the boron and aluminum atoms, which are also quite small, they have room for six electrons. So for all four of these types of atoms, hydrogen, beryllium, boron, and aluminum, we will never see them following the octet rule of eight. They will each follow their own rule with the correct number of electrons that is appropriate for their size. Let's go ahead and take a look at this example, AlCl3. Let's draw the Lewis structure for this molecule now that we know that the aluminum atom is too small to hold an octet. If we wanted to draw the Lewis structure for this molecule, we would follow the same procedure that we always use, starting by adding up the number of valence electrons in the molecule. So we have three valence electrons in aluminum. Each chlorine atom has seven valence electrons for a total of 21, plus the three from aluminum gives us a total of 24 electrons. And we're going to start by putting the aluminum atom in the center with the chlorine atoms arranged around it, and we'll connect all of those atoms with single bonds, and those three single bonds uses up six electrons, which leaves us with a total of 18 remaining electrons. And like normal, we're gonna start by filling in the octets for the outer atoms. So each chlorine currently has two, and they each need six more. And all of these lone pairs counts up to 18 electrons, which leaves us with no more. Now, when we look at the central aluminum and we ask ourselves how is it doing in terms of satisfying its octet knowing that aluminum only likes to have six electrons around it we can see that aluminum has two four six electrons which means that it has enough and it is happy we don't need to try to turn one of those lone pairs of electrons into a double bond that would put too many electrons around aluminum. One of the ways that we can confirm that this is an accurate structure for this molecule, even though aluminum only has six electrons, is by using formal charge. Remember, formal charge is, is our tool that we have for verifying the accuracy of our Lewis structures. So let's go ahead and calculate the formal charge for the chlorine atoms and the aluminum atom in this molecule. Chlorine has a valence of seven. Each chlorine atom in this molecule has one bond and a total of six non-bonding electrons for a formal charge of zero, which is good. Aluminum is in group 3A, so it has three valence electrons. This aluminum has three bonds and no lone pairs, so it also has a formal charge of zero, which is good. If we did attempt to convert one of these uh, lone pairs into a double bond, we would see that one of our chlorine atoms would no longer have a formal charge of zero, and our aluminum would also no longer have a formal charge of zero, which implies that that structure is not correct. Nitrogen is another atom that is okay with sometimes having less than eight electrons. So nitrogen is a weird atom in that it is okay with seven electrons, an odd number of electrons. It does like to have eight electrons, the full octet. But for whatever reason, nitrogen is fine if you give it an uneven number of electrons. And that's kind of an interesting violation to the octet rule. Let's take a look at an example of nitrogen 
having an odd number of electrons. So over here we have the NO2 molecule, nitrogen dioxide. The nitrogen is in group five, so it has five valence electrons, two oxygen atoms with six electrons each. It's a total of 17 electrons. Put the nitrogen in the middle with the oxygens around it, connecting with single bonds. That uses four and leaves us with 13 electrons. And then let's take those 13 electrons and use those to give octets to the outer atoms, like that, which uses up a total of 12, leaving us with one more, which we have to put on the center. Now our nitrogen in the middle has one, two, three, four, five electrons around it, which is not quite enough. So we can go ahead and take a lone pair from oxygen and turn that into a double bond. And now our nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's okay. And again, we can use formal charge as a tool to help us determine if this structure is all right. We have six valence electrons for the oxygen, two bonds, four non-bonding, that's a formal charge of zero. This oxygen atom, six minus one minus six is negative one. And our nitrogen, five minus three minus one is a plus one. So we do see some formal charges here, but these are not formal charges that are outside the realm of what we would be okay with. And there isn't any way for us to get rid of these formal charges. So if we try to move them around, move the electrons around, we're gonna end up in a situation where the nitrogen has too many electrons. So even though this looks really strange, this is actually a good structure for the NO2 molecule. Now there are some atoms that are so large that they are okay with having more than eight electrons. So these large atoms are okay with an octet or they are okay with more than eight. Now I'm not gonna give you an exact number of electrons that each of these atoms are comfortable having. We're going to use formal charges as a way of determining when these large atoms have an appropriate number of electrons. So the list of atoms that we're gonna commonly see having extra electrons are iodine, sulfur, phosphorus, xenon, krypton, and chlorine. And again, these are just the ones that are the most common that we see going above eight electrons. So here's an example right here where we have SO3. Sulfur and oxygen each have six valence electrons. So this molecule has a total of 24 valence electrons. We put sulfur in the middle and the oxygens around it connecting with single bonds, which leaves us with 18 electrons. And we're gonna start by putting lone pairs on the outer oxygens, and that uses up all of our electrons. As you know, when we look at the sulfur in the middle, it has two, four, six. It would prefer to have some more, so we can take a lone pair and turn that lone pair into a double bond. When we've done that, this oxygen atom right here has a formal charge of zero. It is six minus two minus four is zero. But this oxygen atom, as well as the one up here, they have formal charges that are not zero. Six minus one minus six is negative one. So this one is also a negative one because they're identically bonded. And the sulfur in the middle has six minus four minus zero, a formal charge of plus two, which we've talked about. Formal charges of plus two aren't great. So one of the ways that we can get rid of this formal charge, this formal charge is too high. That means that we need to give that sulfur some more electrons. So we can take a lone pair away from that oxygen atom, which changes the formal charges on both of those atoms. Now, both of these oxygen atoms have a formal charge of zero. And let's recount sulfur. Six minus five minus zero is a plus one. Now this is not necessarily bad, minus one and plus one, but we can take a lone pair from that last oxygen atom and move that in. And when we do that, now all of the atoms in this molecule have a formal charge of zero, which is okay.
So in this case, we've got a lot of electrons around that sulfur, but the sulfur is happy with a formal charge of zero. And sulfur is one of our large atoms that are okay with accommodating more than eight. And again, in this situation, I just kept working on moving electrons around until I got my sulfur to a formal charge of eight. Let's practice that with two more examples. So we have PCl5, that phosphorus has five valence electrons, five chlorines, seven electrons each, we have a total of 40 valence electrons. We're gonna put phosphorus in the middle and the five chlorines we're going to fit around the phosphorus, connecting each one with single bonds. And that uses a total of two, four, six, eight, ten 10 electrons, leaving us with 30. We'll now put those lone pairs on the chlorine atoms, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, leaving us with no extra electrons. How are we doing with formal charges? All of our chlorine atoms have the same bonding pattern, seven valence electrons minus one bond, six non-bonding, a formal charge of zero, all of these chlorine atoms are happy. They all have a formal charge of zero. What about phosphorus in the middle? Even though phosphorus has two, four, six, eight, ten electrons, we're going to rely on its formal charge to tell us if it's okay or not. Valence of five minus five bonds and no non-bonding electrons, there's another formal charge of zero. So here's a phosphorus that is violating the octet rule by having 10 electrons around it, but it's in a good bonding situation, which we know because it has that formal charge of zero. And here we have one final example, sulfur with six valence electrons, seven fluorines, each have seven, six fluorines, each have seven valence electrons. That gives us a total of 48 valence electrons. We put sulfur in the middle and all six fluorine atoms go around that sulfur. That uses up two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 electrons leaving us with 36 remaining. And we're gonna start by putting those 36 electrons around our fluorines, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36. We've really stacked a lot of electrons around this sulfur in the middle. We're gonna use formal charge as a way of determining if that sulfur is okay with as many bonds as it has. Sulfur, it has a valence of six. This sulfur has six bonds and no non-bonding electrons, which leaves it with a formal charge of zero. And the fluorines also, seven valence electrons, one bond, six non-bonding, all have formal charges of zero. So again, if you're drawing the Lewis structure of a molecule that has one of our larger atoms that is capable of violating the octet rule, don't worry so much about how many electrons should I specifically put around this molecule. Use the formal charge as a way of determining when you have given it too much or not enough or exactly the right amount.